All right. Um, well, I, again, I appreciate the opportunity and um, like, uh, I forget who said, but I, I've been up since 4 a.m. this morning. So I did take a nap about an hour ago and, and just woke up about 15 minutes ago. So I might be a little bit uh, groggy here, but uh, I certainly appreciate the, uh, the, uh, F, the uh, opportunity to speak before you all. Um, it's not like the, the first time when I was actually in Phoenix, but uh, at least it, it, um, it's the, the travel is not so bad. So uh, with that, I'm going to do a presentation here tonight on um, the uh, top 25 uh, DXCC entities and um, most wanted lists. Um, the uh, most wanted lists started, believe it or not, uh, some of you will probably remember this, but back back around the mid mid fifties, uh, after uh, the DXCC program started up after World War II, started back up for the second time, uh, starting uh, November the fifteenth of uh, nineteen forty five. One too much longer before guys started, you know, wanting to know well, what do you need and what do you need. Uh, they would ask each other. So the first um, most wanted list started as, as early as the mid 50s. Um, it was good for DXers. It was used by DXpeditioners uh, to, to determine where to go next, uh, what was rare. Uh, and and over, over time, um, there's been different kinds of most wanted lists uh, that you can choose it by mode, by band, uh, by continent even by country and, and even uh, zones. Uh, many of you guys will remember the, the uh, DX Magazine used to publish their own list um, and they would, they would do it by, uh, by mail. In the magazine, there would be a couple of pages worth in Carl's Magazine that said, uh, it came out in September, October every year. And then the uh, actual results were tabulated by by uh, Carl uh, and and some others that helped him, uh, and those results were done in, in the January February issue. Uh, believe it or not, the um, the AWRL kind of sort of keeps track of of the uh, most wanted. Um, we'll talk more a little bit more about that in, in a minute uh, at near the end of the presentation. Uh, but they they calculated uh, in the in in January. They need a little bit of prodding sometimes to, uh, to get the data out. Um, but the most reliable these days is, um, is obviously club log, which most of us, I suspect, are using. Um, the survey takes uh, your logs from DXers all around the world, and it's able to look at not just your mixed uh, DXCCs, but your, uh, the different modes, phone, CW, um, digital and it's able to tell us the results from that and this is actually uh, updated twice a month uh, by club log and so most of my data here is, is coming from club log that's that's what that's the list these days that everyone pretty much goes by so we're gonna go from uh, number 25 down to number one um, and, and if I've got any details, which there's not a lot at this point, um, but I, I, I'll give you some details of some of the things that I know that are uh, at least in the works for future operations. Uh, number 25 is uh, YK, and they have not been on the air since 2011 when the Civil War broke out there. And at this point, there are no, no known uh, operators, amateur radio operators uh, in in YK anymore. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, YK1AO is in California, and his his family are in California. Uh, YK1, uh, I'm trying to think who it was just recently. I think it was. Um, uh, I can't remember who it was. Alpha Mike. Um, just recently passed away, and there is at least one more YK that I don't, I don't, I haven't been able to figure out his uh, whereabouts. But 
the bottom line is um, this one's not going to be on probably in, until um, the war is over and, and hams actually go back um, to, to Syria. The last, the last bin uh, was in 2010, uh, just before the shutdown. And then the last de-expedition was by uh, the, the uh, 6Gs uh, operating as a YK-9 Golf, and that was in 2008. Uh, the outlook for this one isn't very good at, 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 at this point. Number 24, uh, Uzbek, uh, excuse me, uh, Turkmenistan has not been on the air since uh, 2006. Uh, they have a dictator in that country and there are big security concerns by the, uh, by the government and they're making it very difficult um, in order for EZ stations to get on the air. There are at least and if not more uh, EZ stations. Uh, if you see it spotted, on the cluster, um, the two, two possibilities. The most likely one is it's not really an EZ station, but it's really a Echo 7 station. Occasionally there's been an EZ that um, ha has been spotted, but it's not really clear why he's been on the air. Um, and and he, it will not count until ARRL gets word that it's legal again to operate amateur radio there. Uh, this is number 23, uh, ZL9, uh, which over the last couple of years has changed its name from uh, uh, what many of us will remember as Auckland and Campbell Islands. The new name is uh, New Zealand uh, Subantarctic Islands. The last time this one was on was in 2016. That was an, uh, an IOTA. Uh, operation for a couple of days. The uh, Perseverance uh, DX group is planning to, to be here uh, for the next de-expedition. They're still working on it. Uh, I'm in contact with them every couple of weeks. Uh, but they're, uh, they're looking at late 2020, uh, 2021 and possibly early 2022 before, uh, before they uh, go to ZL9. Uh, just got some news on this one uh, just just this week. Uh, number 22, J.D. Manami Toroshima. Most of the guys I suspect in the Arizona area probably do not need this, but it's it's pretty rare, uh, especially the further west you go of Arizona. Um, JG8NQJ uh, talk is going back. Many of you will remember he... Uh, he was very active every uh, couple of weeks. He'd go there and then come home for a few weeks and then go back. Well, he hasn't been there probably in at least uh, nine, nine or 12 months, something like that. In fact, I thought he had stopped, stopped altogether. And this was just prior to uh, COVID-19. But he'll be back. Uh, his QSL manager, Sin, J-A-H-C-J-Y, uh, sent me an email this week saying that he would be back starting on October the 14th and he would be there until uh, mid January of, of next year. Uh, the JD one BNA license, I don't know, there, this was a couple, probably a couple of months ago, there was some talk that the uh, JD one BNA would be going back there. Um, later I found out that um, the license is expired and this is probably someone playing games. Um, also, JF7MTO uh, is currently on Ogasawara, but he is supposed to be making some uh, short trips over to, to Man Manami Toroshima, but that has not happened as of yet. And that's, that's kind of old news, uh, probably at least probably four or five, six months old. But uh, JD1 uh, will be back on the air uh, in another couple weeks. He only operates CW, I think, at this point. Uh, runs about 50 watts and uh, only gets on in his spare time. But if you need it, well, uh, hopefully you'll be able to catch him. Like I said, usually on CW. Uh, number 21, uh, KH5, uh, Palmyra, and Jarvis. Uh, nothing, nothing really to report on this one. The last time it was on was K5P. 
Um, they made uh, some 79,000 uh, QSOs on the last the expedition. Um, but no, I'm not aware of any groups that are planning to go here. Um, probably it, it's probably not too difficult to get to a place of all of our uh, KH rare ones out in the Pacific. Uh, VP8, um, South Sandwich. The uh, last the expedition uh, it was VP8 STI back in 2016. Um, 50, almost 55,000 Qs. Probably gonna be a long time uh, before we see this one come back on the air because basically uh, uh, South Sandwich is on, on your way to nowhere. You, you basically, if you're going to South Sandwich, that, or buy it, you're, you're, you're actually gonna go to it if you're gonna go anywhere near it. Um, Mount Athos, um, we, you know, we recently lost uh, Monk Apollo. Uh, I think that's probably been a little over a year now. Uh, this last summer, uh, 2019, I had the privilege of uh, going to lunch uh, with Monk Ivakos. Ivakos is, is another, is the, uh, Greek word, uh, it's a Greek uh, and, and translations out to uh, Jacob. I had the opportunity to meet uh, Monk Ivakos and he is on the air, but it's it's pretty much the same as, as Monk Apollo. He, he gets on in his spare time. Uh, but uh, in discussing um, with, with uh, Monk Ivakos, he basically wants others to be able to get on the air from, from, uh, from Mount Athos. And I think this will be a change uh, over the last uh, two decades of what we've seen uh, with just one, one station. It looks like there possibly could be more stations. I know for a fact there are other uh, SV hams that are monks, that are amongst the uh, different, uh, the different, uh, locations, um, trying to think of the word I'm looking for, but the, uh, the different churches, that's, that's not the word they use, but, uh, um, there are, there are hams and several of them are, are, um, uh, a VHF only licensees. So we, there are some more possibilities we could see activity. And I know this is probably much rarer than number 19 in, in Arizona. I know a lot of W6s and 7s that need this one for their last uh, DXCC entity. So at least there's, there's someone living there and there's at least a possibility that they could get on the air. Um, number 18, not likely to come on anytime soon. Deshesheo, last time 2009, the uh, K5D guys. Uh, with uh, an amazing 115,000 uh, QSOs, 32,000 unique QSOs. Uh, the biggest thing holding this one up, obviously, is the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, but it, it can be done. Um, uh, so number uh, 17, um, this one... Um, comes on typically every three to four years, although it's, it's a little past that since the last time it was on. It's been a little over five years now with PQ0T being the last operation. Uh, there, before COVID, there was a uh, group uh, within Brazil that were working on putting this one together. So I think when things kind of settle down with COVID, we, we could very well see uh, uh, another operation from Trindadi and uh, Martin Baz. And right, right in front of it, number 16, PY0S. Again, this is another one that comes on about every three to five years. Uh, the last the expedition uh, was a PT0S in 2012. And the last time it was actually on the air was in 2015. I'm not aware of any uh, activity or future plans for St. Peter and Paul rocks, um, but you never know. It could, maybe a scientist could go there again, as, as has happened in the past. On number 15, ZS8, Prince Edward and Marion Island. The last time anyone was there was in 2017. Uh, again, this is one of those that comes on 
typically every couple of years. Um, as far as I know, um, there's never really been a, uh, an out and out de-expedition uh, here. Um, or, yeah, a multi-op de-expedition, I should say. I think there was at least one ZS that went there for several weeks or several months uh, back in the late 90s, early uh, 2000 timeframe. But I know uh, m multiple people have tried to, to get to this one and they're, it, it, at least it's on the radar for, for de-expeditioners. Number 14, uh, Midway. Uh, believe it or not, it's been nine years since the last operation. Uh, uh, there was a W5 F FGJ um, who was uh, actually working there. Uh, it's not, not impossible, but uh, it can be done from, from Midway. Um, and this one, what I, did, I needed to update this uh, slide, obviously. This one was scheduled for October of this year. It's actually been pushed back. This is at least the second, possibly the third time it's been pushed back. I think at this point it's scheduled for February uh, and that, that's gonna all depend on uh, obviously on, the, on COVID, I think. Number 13, uh, YV0. Uh, again, this one's uh, usually, uh, I'd say over the last few decades, it's been on maybe about every seven years or so. Uh, the last time was in 2007, way past uh, due for, for a new one or for a new operation. There's a, this is a very political situation, not just uh, the political situation right now uh, in, in Venezuela, but also between the two clubs. And there, there may actually be a third club uh, that's trying to to get to this uh, to this rare one, uh, Aves Island. Uh, typically, they've they've rotated it between the two clubs. Uh, one one year it'll be this club and the the RCV and uh, uh, I forget who the other club is. Um, they they would go the next time. So, and then now I I believe there's a third club trying to to get in in and go, but I don't see anything happening. Not not just because of the COVID, but because of the uh, the political climate there, and the lack of money. And you all have seen the. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen this in the news. Uh, what's going on in in uh, in Venezuela? Uh, number twelve, uh, Macquarie. Uh, this is one I don't think we've ever really seen a de-expedition here. I know. I know at least one VK guy who is trying to to put on a de-expedition here. I, I hope he can make it. I hope it happens. Uh, we wish him luck. Typically what happens here is um, one of the radio technicians just happens to be a ham. Uh, the last time that happened was uh, last year uh, and, and the year before uh, with uh, VK0AI. Um, he was there in 2018, late 18 and, and uh, early 2019, uh, he did on his last operation, or when he was there, uh, he only operated uh, FT8 and may have made a few QSOs on SSB, but he did, he did pretty well for, for being an unknown and um, you know, operating in his spare time. He did a pretty good job operating FT8. If, for those that need it, needed it and those that were active uh, on FT8, I think most of them got uh, a VK0 AI. Um, number 11, Glorioso, last time 2009. I know this is probably a little bit higher up on your all's uh, most wanted list, probably uh, when I say higher, I mean lower in number because um, it's a lot, lot more, a lot, a lot di more uh, difficult to work, uh, Glorioso, I suspect, from the West Coast versus the East Coast. But nothing, nothing to report on this one. Uh, the last group that was there did a fantastic job. Hopefully you guys got them. Uh, another FT, uh, Kregulin. The last operation was uh, FT5 X-Ray Tango, who was a, uh, I believe he was a scientist there. He was only operating for a couple of weeks. 
and that was back in 2017. And then the last uh, de expedition here was uh, in 2005, FT5XO. Yeah, I think that was the uh, Penguin Light guys. Uh, let's see. There's, there's, there is possibility, you know, a French, a French uh, scientist or a Frenchman could go there uh, on one of the long-term uh, over winter, over uh, summer uh, projects. It's possible, but you know, it'll be a surprise to everybody if it if it does happen. Uh, Peter One Island. Uh, 3Y0X comes in at number nine. Uh, the last de expedition there was in uh, 2006. Nothing, I, I, I don't know anything about any uh, upcoming plans for this one. It'll be very expensive if they do go, I'm sure. Uh, Johnston, just got some news on this one. Uh, uh, the last time anyone was there was in 2003. Um, several groups I know for a fact are working on this one. The uh, Fish and Wildlife Service is uh, in control of this of this location. Uh, but the thing I found out was uh, one of the things I think has been holding people back, believe it or not, is uh, these crazy fire ants is what they're called. And uh, it's they're, they've been working on it for close to 10 years trying to exterminate them people from the Fish and Wildlife Service do go here, I guess, several times a year to check on the status, uh, but they're, they're uh, trying to get rid of these uh, pests. Uh, Curie, cage 7 k The last time this was on was in 2005. Um, it's in the works. I, I know some, some uh, at least one uh, group that's trying to get there. Other than that, I uh, can't say any more on on that one. Uh, BV9P, uh, this is this is kind of an amazing one. It's actually been in the news uh, recently, uh, um, but the last time this one was on was in 2003. BQ using the call BQ9P. Um, I this slide's a little bit old. I knew I know something was in the works, uh, but with the current political situation. Uh, uh, with China, uh, I don't see it happening anytime soon. There's, it's a real security concern here. Um, so I don't have any more to give you on that one. CE0X, um, two islands here in, in San Felix, in the San Felix Islands, uh, San Felix itself, which I believe is a military base, and then San Ambrosia. Uh, the last expedition here was 18 years ago. This is the number one most inact on the the number one on the most inactive list. In other words, it hadn't been on for for 18 uh, 18 years now. Um, nothing to report on this one. BS7H. Probably everybody on the West Coast has this at least once. Uh, the last de expedition here was in uh, 2007. Uh, there's only been four operations uh, that have counted for DXCC. Um, again, with the political situation in the South China Sea, you don't see anything happening here. In fact, uh, last I heard, there was a chain across the, uh, the entrance into the lagoon um, basically a sign in front of it that said, don't enter. I think they have, they probably have since uh, started pouring concrete in here, but I, I don't know that for a fact, but it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, a lot of activity there in the South China Sea with China. Number three, uh, FT5W. Uh, this is uh, one that hasn't been on since 2009. Uh, there's never been a large scale de expedition. Uh, the problem here is, is, as some of the US groups will tell you and the French groups will tell you, is there's um, some serious uh, conservation concerns here. Um, this is kind of their, uh, France's uh, pride and joy. They really don't want to introduce uh, any, anything to uh, uh, hurt the, uh, the ecosystem there. And uh, I, I will tell you, several groups are trying to go there, but 
it, it's not looking good at the moment, at least. I think the most likely team will be the uh, the French group will probably be the most likely people, if anyone can go there. I guess we could keep our fingers crossed also that a scientist could go uh, who happens to be a ham radio operator. But uh, outside of that, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Number two, uh, a little bit of interesting news. I don't think I put it on this slide. Um, I just heard this two weeks ago. Um, an update on this. Uh, last, the uh, last activity was 3Y0E uh, back in 2008. Uh, the, de the last de-expedition, believe it or not, was 1990. Any operations since then have been uh, somebody working on the island uh, and operating in their spare time. Uh, the last two uh, attempts here have failed. Uh, that was the 3Y0, um, was it Z? And then most recently, uh, 3Y0I, their first attempt. Uh, Dom is, uh, I guess he's still saying he's going uh, in, in December of this year. I kind of doubt it with COVID, but uh, you know, I, I don't speak for, for Dom. Uh, but recently I have heard that a, uh, another group is trying to go um, a group not uh, not in the U.S. Uh, I don't have any other details other than uh, a strong rumor, basically, that another team is is uh, gearing up and looking at going to Bouvet. Let's hope they can do it. And of course, number one, North Korea. There's only been four approved operations. Uh, this one was added to the DXCC list in 1995. Uh, there's been just over 12,000 unique QSOs, uh, of which almost 7,900 uh, QSOs have been claimed for uh, DXCC awards. Uh, multiple teams have been working on this one. Uh, the last accepted operation was uh, December, uh, a one-day December operation in uh, 2015. So that rounds out the... Uh, the top 25. Um, I did want to talk real quick about the uh, the ARLs, what they call top 340. Um, they haven't done this in about a year, but uh, basically what they have is a list of uh, their rarest countries based on credits that have been applied to the DXCC program. As you can see, the, the number one country is, is P5. Um, Again, 7,800, almost 7,900 uh, people have claimed credit for that. Uh, Z, Z6 is in there, uh, Kosovo at, at this time. This, like I said, this is over a year, a little over a year old data, but only at that time, only 14,000 people had claimed uh, Z6. Obviously, it's not as rare as that. More people have worked it. Uh, they probably just haven't, uh, not so many of them have claimed it, I guess, at the DXCC desk. So that's that's a listing of the top 25 uh, from the ARRL list. Just as a comparison uh, between the two lists, you can see P5, it's at the top. Uh, what else? BS7 is, is, is still in the top five there. And 3Y0 Bouvet. So as, uh, yeah. And I think... Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, I, I did want to talk about, I, this is something that I do keep track of. Um, the, uh, the last time any stations were on, the, in, what I call the inactive list. This is the top 10 most wanted inactive list. And uh, as you can see, CE0X is at the top uh, since 2002. Then uh, KH3, BV9, KH7K. Uh, 3Y, Peter 1, YV0, Echo Zulu, uh, BS7H, 3Y, uh, Bouvet, and uh, KP5. All, all of these, uh, let's see, since, let's see, I guess if you had been DXing, because it, it takes 390, or excuse me, 330, that right 331 to get on the uh, honor roll so if you've been a ham 
and you've been seriously DXing and you worked everything possible, if you've been on since 2008, you could be on the, uh, the DXCC honor roll. So that's 12 years, basically. If you've been uh, a ham for 12 years or more, it is possible that you could be on the, on the honor roll if you worked all the other countries and you missed these nine countries. Uh, this is a listing that I did for, uh, of all the uh, most wanted countries, these are at least active and uh, ranking them by, by their own rank within. Um, Mount Athos, you know, you at least have a chance to work these. It's, it is the rarest of the ones that are, that are active. 4U1UN, and I'm sure that's going to drop down because they've been quite active operating remote. Um, six Oscar, T3, T, excuse me, T30. So you can see here's the, the, uh, the top 10. And I just wanted to, that, that's the end of my presentation. I'd be glad to take some questions. I did want to thank the, uh, the uh, officers that asked me to do this presentation, Mike and, uh, and, and Lee, uh, and, and I'm glad we were able to do a, present, uh, a, a test run of this. And I really want to thank you, the audience, the members of the uh, Central Arizona DX Association for the opportunity to do this. And I'd be glad to uh, answer some questions if I can. <laughs>